Hi everyone and welcome to the Say As It Is with Pete podcast series. I'm Pete, your host, and each week I will bring you some frank and honest conversations covering various topics from learning and development, friendships, funding, HR, strengths, recruitment, ESG, well-being, EDI, employability, and much, much more. So let's get this week's episode underway and say as it is. Well, thank you for tuning in again this week um, to Say As It Is with Pete. I am your host, Pete, and this episode is going to look at strengths in careers. Now, some of you may be aware from my last podcast last week um, that it was National Careers Week 2023, as well as Scottish Apprenticeship Week 2023. But also, we just had Apprenticeship or National Apprenticeship Week as well back in February, Um, And we now also have coming up International Leadership Week in March. It never ends. It's so, it's so, so much between February and March. It is unreal. But my last uh, podcast talked about giving career advice and guidance. And one thing that um, has opened my eyes recently is from me becoming a master strength scope practitioner. Now, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you would have seen the journey I've gone through um, with StrengthScope and became a master StrengthScope practitioner. And what that has done as a L&D practitioner has opened my eyes even more, um, sent my creativity strength into complete overdrive, um, as well as my enthusiasm. Um, but I'm dialing them back slightly. And I shouldn't dial them back. I'm actually you know, learning how to keep them under control and dial a few others up to bring, them, bring it down so that a uh, I can control those. Um, but I fully believe that strengths, you know, shouldn't just be used in the working world. It should be used both in personal life and especially in careers. Now, Strengthscope is recognized by and is accredited by the British Psychological Society. And that's fantastic because so much research has gone into Strengthscope and validates it so much. So why StrengthScope? So I'm just going to give you an introduction, and this comes from StrengthScope, um, about what StrengthScope is. Now, StrengthScope provides a precise um, and unique assessment of 24 work-based strengths, giving each employee a picture of themselves at their best and providing a framework for understanding how to bring their best to work every day. So the platform brings clarity and a common language for all employees, enabling individual uh, employees to communicate their value and be open about areas of development. Now, from using StrengthScope, uh, it impacts as um, being so profound in terms of helping people with their self-confidence, their well-being, you know, engagement with work. Um, you know, it can be life-changing. And there's also regular feedback sessions, which we call great conversations. And it's a way for people to start saying hello to themselves um, and realize that actually they have some amazing strengths within the four categories, which we'll look at later. Now, the interesting thing about strength is that um, from organizations that do it, they find that there is a big impact on the business. They see how people change. Um, you know, sometimes there's increased profit, there's higher customer engagement, there's lower turnover, um, you know, there's increased employee engagement, um, and there's also an increased intention rate. And the best thing about strengths is how you're changing your mindset within the business and how you're using that strengths um, terminology and having a strengths culture. Now, I'm going to put a link in the bio. Now, I work for an organization and I actually recently did during um, National Apprenticeship Week a podcast for the company based on how I've embedded um, the strengths within our apprenticeships and how it relates. Now, you that link will be in the bio um, and it's called the Apprentice Strength Scope Pathway Possibility Program that I run within my company. And it's very successful. It gets our apprentices to identify their strengths and how to use them, but also how to lean on others. Now, I know we all talk about skills. Now, skills are things that people can learn. And, you know, we can all learn a certain skill. And when we come to an organization, there are lots more skills that we are going to learn. But I feel that it's fundamental that as employers, 
we should start looking more at strengths because everybody has their own unique strengths. And, you know, for every individual, when you have a, an interview, you're always asked, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And people sometimes sit there and get really stuck and not sure what to say. But this is where I believe strength should be embedded, you know, as part of career development, but also within education. So although I've gone away and embedded a strengths awesomeness culture within my organization and embedded it with not only our employees, but with our apprentices, I also feel that now is the time that education providers, whether you be a training provider, a school, whatever you may be, is to start looking at strengths. Um, and, you know, strengths can bring lots of values to people because although strength talks about the 24 unique work strengths, these can actually be adapted not only to work, but also to day to day life and within education, because pulling on your strengths can help you with your studies, you know, what you're wanting to do in life help you become a better leader, a better communicator, can also help you with your emotional side, your relationship side, can help you with how you're processing information, but also how you get your results and become results focused in making sure that you get what you need done, done. Now, there's many different journeys that you can go on with Scope, and I'm gonna go over a bit of that uh, a little bit later in this podcast. But for me, I think if I had this opportunity within kind of secondary school in knowing what strengths was and how it could help me as an individual, I feel that I would have probably grown and gained a lot from it. I'm not saying that I'm not now because now I am, but I do think this needs to start off within education. And I know there is a really great podcast from uh Paul, the founder of C, uh, the founder of uh, Strengthscope, and uh, another guy called Paul, who is one of the trainers from Strengthscope, and I'll put the link to their um, podcast in this uh, bio as well about strengths in education, and that was really interesting and and another eye opener, and I really love listening to that podcast. It's about an hour long, but well worth listening to. But I think. Young people need to understand what their strengths are. And we spend a lot of time in education teaching, pe teaching young people what they kind of need to know in regards to geography, science, math, English, biology, all those physics, other sorts of things. But actually, what are individual strengths? And strengths can be used, as I say, throughout education, whether it's working within a team, working as yourself, looking how to bring your strengths to your studies and various other things. And I really think it should be done. Now, obviously, there is a funding in, in implication here. And, you know, I know schools and, and stuff will say, oh, we need the funding. But I think it's something that should be looked at. Um, we do something, well, I do something with some apprentices, even when we, we don't initially put them on their strength scope uh, report at the beginning. We kind of have a bit of fun at the beginning. And we look at, you know, how do you identify what strengths you've got before they do their strength scope report? And then we compare to what they think their strengths are to what their actual strengths are. Now, you know, the, the thing with strengths is that, you know, you're looking at finding out what your seven fundamental strengths are or your seven significant seven, as they're known, as well as your bubbling unders. Now, when we talk about bubbling unders, I think it needs to be clear that, that those bubbling unders are strengths that you've got potential to be at. And then looking at your energy drainers, because, you know, if I knew what my energy drainers are, but I know we now know what they are now, but if I knew what they were when I was back in school, I would have probably avoided certain situations and events where those really drain me and, you know, lent on my bubbling unders and my strengths a lot more to help me, you know, progress a lot more in my education, make me more engaged in education and learning and wanting to progress myself. Now, at strengths, there is a real defined definition of strengths and it and the and how we define strengths is about underlining qualities that energize us and we are great at or have the potential to become great at. And that's the definition from strengths and is a great definition that I use quite a lot here with the team that I work with um, and how I deliver this out in the real world. But 
I think with strengths, we have to also realize that it's about how our mindset is and how um, our mindset affects our behavior. Also, the culture and the results we want. And this is why I think at a young age, whether it be in secondary school or kind of, you know, primary school, learning about strengths and the fundament and, you know, kind of understanding what strengths are, but then you get into it more within kind of mainstream education. But even going on to, you know, training providers, you know, this is something that they should be doing, I think. And happy to have that conversation with any training provider that is listening about how I can come and embed strengths within your business and towards your apprentices. But there's a great model uh, that I use quite a lot, and it's called the pathway of possibility. And there's also something called the pathway of limitation. Now, both of these can cross over sometimes, and both of them look at four areas. What we focus on, our emotions, our performance and our results. Now, there are certain things that we look at on the pathway of limitation. And when we look at when we're looking at the focus on, that's what we're focusing on our weaknesses, the threats and the problems. On the emotions, we're looking at kind of the negative bias, the negative emotions, the narrowing of choices. When we're looking at performance, we're looking at that kind of mindset, the fear, the energy snapping, the drainers that we've got. And then we look at results. This comes to a sense of helplessness, you know, disengagement, self-doubt, um, always questioning whether you're actually valid or not. Um, and, you know, have you done what you've done? Is that right? You don't probably think it is, but, you know, you think, oh, it's not good enough. Um, you know, I could have done better. So that pathway of limitation, we want to get people away from that. And, and knowing what your significant seven strengths are, your bubbling unders and those drainers, what you can then do is use those from having some great conversations and learning how to use them and start moving on to what we call the pathway of possibility. You know, from there, you're looking at your strengths, you're looking at opportunities, you're looking at how you're using your strengths and your bubbling unders to resolve problems or come up with solutions. You're learning how to have positive emotions and opening up to more choices. And one thing with strengths is, is when you know everybody's strengths, especially if you're, you know, within starting your career or you're, you know, in sixth form or you're a young person uh, looking to figure out what your strengths are. If you know what your strengths are and you know what others strengths are around you, you can actually lean upon others strengths to help you with your emotions and how you're processing things and also, you know, opening yourself up to more choice. Then you've got your performance. So this is more looking at your trust, your hope, your energy boosting, and then also your results. So you then become have a more sense of power, more engagement and more self-confidence. And I've seen this within people that I've done uh, the strengths uh, journey with, uh, with within the organization I work for and from conversations I've had with others in regards to strength scope. Now, I really think that although I'm saying here that, you know, strengths should be within education and I solely agree with it and it should be part of the, you know, the framework in the education sector of identifying your strengths because you're going to learn all these skills. But actually knowing what your strengths are, knowing your bubbling unders and knowing your drainers can really help you, you know, within your education setting and help you understand yourself. And you can apply your strengths. So when you're looking at a problem or you're going to study something, you can always think, what three strengths am I going to bring? What three strengths do I need to help me with this? What are going to be my blockers? What are those drainers? And is there anyone else that I can lean on to help me um, with this? So strengths for me within education is key, but it's also key within careers. Because as employers, we should be looking more at what people's strengths are. Now, there is a journey within Strengthscope that you can go from having strengths at the onboarding stage. So anybody you bring into the business, you could start off with them doing, as part of their onboarding and induction process, a introduction orientation to strengths and get them to complete their Strengthscope report. Now, this is the basic Strengthscope report that, as I said, identifies the significant seven, the bubbling unders and your drainers. This is also a good way for you within a company to see that individual strengths and see how they fit within the team and start building that strengths culture. Now, 
from those strengths, you'll be able to look at, again, how you can interact and engage with that individual. You can probably see how that individual might react, you know, if they've got lots of emotional, emotional control, if it's one of their strengths, you know, or if it's one of their drainers, you know, you can start seeing about the relationship side, you can see about the execution, the thinking. Um, so there's a lot you can see from an individual at that beginning. And then you can start having great conversations. Now, I want to make it very clear that strengths is not, not a performance based tool. It's not. It's to help you recognize what your strengths are and how to use them to, to get onto the, from, from the pathway of limitations to the pathway of possibility, but also to help you get to the zone of peak performance. And that's using your strengths. That's using your knowledge and skills and putting some wind in those sails and getting you there, right? So we all want to be at that zone of peak performance. We all talk about in organizations at senior levels about productivity, productivity, productivity. Well, you know what? Strengths scope can help with that. And knowing your strengths can help you be more productive. It can change your mindset. It can put you on the pathway of possibilities and it can get you into the zone of peak performance, which is perfect and something we all want to see. But I do believe that that even that basic strength scope report can help someone right at the beginning of their career. So if you've got a strengths culture within the business and all your teams are doing strengths, then when you see that individual strengths and you add it to the, you know, I've got a, a strengths awesomeness uh, wall in, in my office for the company I work for and you know, it will have and has got some of the wheels on there and you can see everybody else's strengths. But knowing as an individual, when you first start your career off and you've done strength scope and you know from having those great conversations and from, you know, identifying your strengths and realizing where some of your, you know, your strengths, you know, or, or lie and know your bubbling under and know your drainers, then you can start using them from the great conversations and then realize that when you need when you've got a project or you're tapping something that needs a bit of creativity and creativity is not one of your strongest uh, strengths, um, but you've got potential to stretch that strength and learn from others, then, you know, you can check the board and see who else within your team has that creativity strength. And then you can go and see them and ask them how would they might tackle it or can they give you some advice and guidance? And then you're leaning on each other, even if you're having a really bad day and you need someone with a bit of empathy to talk to. You can see who's got empathy and give them a call and have a chat with them. And then you know you're going to get that empathy and you're leaning on someone else's, someone else's kind of strength on that element. But I think it's key that all employees should do strengths. Now, in some cases, not every employee can do it, but I do think employees should do it, especially in an office or working environment, um, you know, which is office-based, because if teams know how what strengths they've got, it works amazing and also strengths, because I say, helps an individual in their career, get them onto that pathway of possibility, gets them to that zone of peak performance and increases productivity. Now, part of my um, master accreditation was my strength scope leader. Now, I love that because it's given me an idea of, um, you know, the strengths that I've got, but also my leader habits, so my leadership habits. I've learned a lot from that and it's, and it's fantastic to do. Um, and it's something that I will be embedding more and more in the business that I work for. But doing the leadership accreditation opened my eyes up to something that kind of gave me a light bulb moment. Now, when somebody comes into the business or into your business or starts their career, what they want to be is become a leader, a manager. They want to be the CEO or owner of the company one day. But they got to start off at the beginning. And the great thing about the leader um, report or the leader strengths uh, or habits, I should say, is that even if you're an aspiring individual that wants to aspire to become a, you know, a leader of the future, from doing your strength scope, you can look at doing your strengths leader and identifying, you know, from the four you know, habits of leadership, what, um, you know, where you, where you are and how people see you. But also from that, 
you can see areas that you need to kind of work on to be a better, uh, more empowering and engaging leader. But also it gives you a overview of how people see you, whether they feel that you are, you know, extremely um, confident as a leader or whether you're, you know, ineffective as a leader. But also from looking at, you know, that that leadership um, process of strengths and how you can use it um, to, you know, identify the four leadership habits, how you can look, how people see you overall within the business, but how you can use that as a bit of a development tool to become a leader of the future. And, you know, internal succession is key for anybody. And I think if you're looking to have leaders of the future, then you need to take them on that journey. You need to start working on somebody's career there and then. But also from from that, you can create what you call your leadership brand. And I will probably do another podcast on leadership brands within strengths, as I'm loving strengths. But it helps you build the leaders of the future. Now, what I'm creating uh, in my own world here with uh, Master Practitioner Status is something called um, Aspiring Strength Scope Empowering Leadership Program. Now, this is taking someone from a basic strength scope to the pathway of possibility, to that zone of peak performance, and then on to their leadership. So it's setting up leaders of the future. And I think, you know, look, there are some amazing hidden talent coming through, whether it be them leaving school or working through uni or college, um, you know, we have to understand that some people have got some amazing hidden talents and skills, um, and they may not be doing great academically, but in the working world, they will shine. And I feel that if an individual knows what their strengths are right at the beginning of their career or before they go into a career, then that's going to help them take them from a pathway of limitation to an absolute pathway of possibility and a endless and mindless selection of opportunities in the real working world. Now, you may think, Pete, you're crazy. And I'm babbling on a little bit, I know. Um, and I may have gone off track slightly now and again, but I think strengths in careers is key, regardless. You know, it's a time for individuals to understand their strengths. As I say, skills we can teach. I can teach someone how to use a photocopy or a fax machine, how to use Word, how to use Excel, we're continuously learning all the time. And as an L&D practitioner, there are vast amounts of information, material and resources for us to all learn from. For example, during the pandemic, Teams and Zoom massively, we all moved to a Teams and Zoom culture. And I had used Teams a little bit, but then, you know, it's not a strong skill of mine, of, you know, IT and using Teams. But I followed a guy called Kevin, on uh, YouTube and, you know, he worked and I believe he still works at Microsoft, but he did all these, you know, videos on all these different skills in regards to how to use Teams. And now I've become a master of using Teams. Um, and I use Teams for all my training, all my meetings, everything. I absolutely love it. But also when I use Canva, I learn how to use Canva and gain my skills from joining Canva courses, from watching YouTube videos and other things. So these are skills I can learn, but also I've learned skills within my own workplace from individuals. So as I say, skills can be learned, but if people have got the right attitude to work and are keen and willing to learn, there are qualifications to support them through their apprenticeships. But also I think fundamental, and I'm gonna say this to all employers now, so I'm expecting lots of messages via LinkedIn or, or emails, um, but, um, and that's me being cheeky, but I strongly believe that strengths should be embedded right at the beginning of someone's career. Help them and you identify their strengths. Help you and them get onto the pathway of possibility. Help you and them get into that zone of peak performance for you and your team and your business. And then let's get them onto becoming leaders of the future. There are other strength scope reports out there and strength scope activities that can be done. For example, strength scope engage. So you can measure the effectiveness of how a team are now, do strength scope and then measure how they are getting on and how it's had an impact within the business later on. There's also strength scope team. So using the team strengths and seeing how they use them and how they're taking accountability and you know, getting the team to, to become one harmonious team 
and you know be the best at what they are and again getting them from the pathway of possibility to a pathway um so pathway of limitation to pathway of possibility getting them into that zone of peak performance but then also getting them to lean on each other's strengths uh, as well so i fully believe strengths should be embedded in education and within career development now i did say earlier and you'll probably say pete you said strengths wasn't a performance tool. It's not. But I do believe that strengths can be used to help people with their own self-development. So if you want to find out more about Strengthscope, then reach out to me. And I'm more than happy to have some amazing conversations with you um, and talk to you about how I embed strengths and how as a master Strengthscope practitioner, I can help you or your business um, with strengths at the start of someone's career and all the way through. Now, I'm going to start to wrap up the the podcast now because I say quite a lot um, and I want to make sure we keep these podcasts short so you don't get too sleepy while listening to my lovely voice. But, you know, I fully believe that strengths is key. Now, as we wrap up this podcast, I just want to say again, you know, look, thank you for listening. Um, You can always listen to a new podcast every Monday um, as I drop a new episode via here or by Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you're following me. Um, And our topic next Monday is going to be looking at the apprentice wage. So that is going to be an interesting one. So until next week, have an amazing week. And again, if you want to reach out and talk to me or you want to join any future podcasts, then let me know. But until then, I'll catch you next Monday.